Let's her down. He's going to dump him hard to the ice. Brady Leopold just loves to fight. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My dream of being a professional hockey player became a reality, but it was all taken away from me in a very short period of time. For many years, hockey was my outlet. Hockey was my drug. When I had a stick in my hand, nothing else mattered. I was able to break into the Western Hockey League in 2004, and I even won the Swift Current Broncos Rookie of the Year. During the summer of my rookie year, I experimented with drugs for the first time. After just seven games in my sophomore season, I walked away from the Swift Current Broncos due to personal reasons. Nobody knew I had been sexually abused at the age of five. I did everything to hide it from everybody, but I just couldn't take it. Drugs and alcohol now took over my life. I did return to the Swift Current Broncos as a 19-year-old, but things were never the same. I was eventually traded to the Kelowna Rockets in my final year of junior where I got to play on a line with the Dallas Stars captain, Jamie Benn, and one of my best friends, the extremely talented Colin Long. It was by far my best season ever, and I even signed with the Tampa Bay Lightning's organization. A dream come true, right? That's when everything went wrong. First it was the cocaine, then came the Oxycontin, and that led me into a 12-year journey into the deepest pits of hell. Within two years, I had now made the switch to heroin, fentanyl, and everything in between, and I was now an intravenous drug user. Multiple suicide attempts and over five trips to the psych ward, I was a shadow of who I once was. By 2014, I was homeless on Hastings in Vancouver, the worst street in North America. By 2015, I was a wanted criminal, making the Crime Stopper headlines more than once. After spending three years in jail, I had completely given up. With nowhere to turn and nowhere to go, I finally started to get honest. I took a chance and made some major changes. This is my story. I overdosed over 10 times. I'm one of the lucky ones. And for that, I will always be grateful. This is for all the men and women we've lost. Matthew Lazinski, Mitch Fadden, this one's for you. My name's Brady Liebel, and I've been to hell and back. This is the road to recovery. Warrior. All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome. Hockey to hell and back. Episode number 34. I'm already holding back tears. I'm not going to lie. This is arguably the most important episode that I've ever done. And there's no easy way to go about this, guys. And uh, there's a couple things, as always, that I, got, I need to cover before we get into the episode. First off, thank you if you're watching live. I'm very grateful that you're joining joining me today. <laughs> If you're listening after the fact, thank you so much. Um, it's been a wild ride. I feel very lucky to be the pos in the position that I'm in. I want to give a very special shout out to Travis Lowe from Global Okanagan, everybody at Global BC uh, for sharing the story of not only me, but puck support as well. Uh, it was tough to watch, tough to uh, know that people are really seeing out there in BC what was going on with me, but I'm, I'm grateful they did a wonderful job. Uh, another special shout out to Doug McLean, Nick Kiprios from Real Kipper at Noon, repping puck support on their show. Puck addiction, go puck yourself addiction. That's what I say uh, these days. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, it's gonna be emotional. I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna be, uh, a tough, a tough episode to get through, but one that we need to do, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm just, I want to get right into it. Couple sponsors to go over, as always, from Kelowna, BC. Take it away, my favorite, Regan Bartell. Hi. 
Hi there, it's Regan Bartell, the play-by-play voice of the Kelowna Rockets, Brady Leopold's biggest fan. Team Issued is connecting all walks of life. Team Issued does this by recreating that special feeling of being a part of something bigger. A community for all striving towards the same goal. Teamissued.ca, promo code TOEDRAG15 for 15% off. Shout out to Regan Bartell, everybody in Kelowna, the Kelowna Rockets. Jesse Paradise, owner of Team Issued out there in Manitoba. Jess, how are you? One more sponsor. We'll get to the last sponsor at the end of the show. Uh, But before we go there, I want to just send my condolences to the entire Gretzky family. Uh, We lost Canada's the world's hockey dad. Just a few days ago, rest in peace, Walter. Uh, I got to meet him when I was a young boy uh, at Burnaby Eight Rinks when I was there for a tournament with my dad. Uh, Mario Lemieux's dad was there. Joe Sackick's dad was there. And Walter stole the show, uh, as he often did. So my condolences to the entire Gretzky family uh, and also uh, to the Pavlich family. Tonight's episode is in honor of Mark Pavlich. He's there in my hat. Rest in peace, Mark. He, he fought a tough battle and another tragedy in the hockey community. And I mean, these are not easy issues to deal with. We're talking mental illness and addiction. And I mean, it, uh, it's taken enough lives. And I'm, I'm here and a lot of people are here to make a difference. And I hope that tonight's episode uh, can do just that as well. So uh, one more sponsor uh, before we get into it. And a very special shout out. Uh, to Curtis Gabriel and Jeff at Pride Tape. Tonight is bought the Boston Bruins Pride Night. Uh, they had the Pride Tape on their on their sticks and warm up. As you can see, my stick back here will always be like this, just to support equality in hockey. Uh, the You Can Play team, guys. Uh, take it away, Steve Buckley down there in Beaverton, Oregon. Pocket of Hell and Back is brought to you by Pride Tape. Pride Tape is a badge of support from teammates, coaches, parents, and pros to young LGBTQ players. It shows every player that they belong playing the sport they love and that we're all on the same team. Show your support for teammates, coaches, and fans in the LGBTQ community by wrapping your stick with Pride Tape. Every roll of tape will make an impact in sports and beyond. Inclusion starts with leadership. Check out some of the ideas of how you can get involved at youcanplayproject.org. Check out Pride Tape at pridetape.com. For more information, you can send an email to aubrey at pridetape.com. That's A-U-B-R-E-E, aubrey at pridetape.com. You can find Pride Tape on facebook.com slash pride tape, on Twitter at pride tape, and at pride tape on Instagram. Pride Tape thanks all of you for being champions for change. Thank you, Steve Buckley down there in Beaverton, Oregon. And you're going to hear in a few minutes how Steve Buckley connected me once again in a way to my guest coming on. And it was a long process tracking this guy down. But you guys know how this goes. Uh, We're going to give away a roll of pride tape here, maybe two later in the episode if we get to it, depending if not next episode for sure. Uh, But we have uh, some pressing matters to deal with. So you guys know how this goes. We'll see you in a few minutes. I know I've said this before, but when I started this podcast, I really had no idea how many other individuals were struggling with similar issues that I had gone through. I first heard about Matthew Lazinski just under a year ago and briefly after that i uncovered the story of my former teammate and line mate mitch fadden both of those individuals we've lost to overdose and tragically there's several others that have now been added to that list as well i knew that i had to do something i couldn't sit back knowing that other hockey players and hockey parents like my dad were struggling with similar issues In the end of last spring, Steve Buckley, who's widely responsible for a lot of the video work and voiceovers for Puck Support, sent me a video that he put together, a mini documentary that has not been publicly released, but has been done for now close to a year. 
in that documentary it opens with buckley's son talking about his struggles through junior hockey with alcohol and pain pills and i had not seen this video until he sent it to me after his son spoke all of a sudden kevin kerbison came on the screen with a story that i had no idea of kevin kerbison is my friend he's a former teammate and somebody that i considered a brother Steve Buckley is from Beaverton, Oregon, and had no idea that Kerbison and myself even knew each other. He came across the video on YouTube of Kevin describing his current situation of being homeless and addicted in the downtown of Kelowna, British Columbia. I'll never forget as I sat there and watched in absolute shock and disgust and hurt in my heart. I watched with my girlfriend Taylor as tears started to storm down my face. I had no idea that my brother, Kevin Kerbison, was struggling with some of the same issues that I had now conquered. It's been close to 10 months since I first saw that video, and it took up until three days ago to finally track Kevin Kerbison down. I was finally able to get his number, but after several phone calls and texts, there was no answer. Until about six hours later, my phone lit up with a text message from my brother, Kevin Kerbison. I knew he was still in active addiction and it was gonna be a tough conversation. But again, I knew I needed to do something and more importantly, I wanted to do something. I'd been trying to track down Kevin Kerbison for close to a year. During our conversation, Kevin told me about the life that he's been living as an addict, currently in a shelter in Kelowna, addicted to fentanyl, among other things. The life that I lived for a long time as well. A life that seems extremely hopeless with no end in sight. Much like me, kerbison has been stabbed, he's overdosed, and really shouldn't be here to tell his story today. I first met Kevin Kerbison when he was 14 years old and I was 15 playing spring hockey. And the following season, we played together for the Ridge Meadow Flames. He was just 15 years old. He was always a thick kid, really built and tough as nails. I remember in one occasion, he fought a 20 year old Brody Henderson. And though he may have got beat, he put up a hell of a fight. And still to this day, I've never seen a goose egg like the one that was on Kirby's forehead. Well, I went on to the WHL, Kirby went on to the BC Hockey League's Vernon Vipers. We were disconnected for a few years, but were able to reconnect while playing beer league with his cousin, and my good friend, Blair Martin. Kevin Kerbison is the kind of guy that everybody loves. He's full of life, he's generous, he's kind, but today he's struggling and today he needs help. Last night, I talked to Kevin Kerbison on a video phone call and he showed me the conditions that he's living in in the shelter, conditions that I know all too well. We reflected on my addiction and the things he's currently doing to survive every single day. The grind of addiction, the grind of being addicted to fentanyl and other opiates, just surviving, trying not to be dope sick. There's no two ways about it. It's the worst thing that I've ever gone through. And I felt it was strangling me and I was never going to get out of it. But today I'm on the other side of that. And it is my greatest hope that the start of Kevin Kerbison's recovery journey will be right now. For the last several days, I've been praying constantly for God to walk with Kevin Kerbison and to start to steer him on the right path to allow the right people to come into his life to help him. And today that starts with me. There's no easy solution for addiction, but I'm here to tell Kevin Kerbison that I love him, I have his back, and I know all of my supporters do as well. This is arguably the most important podcast that I've ever done. I know this is going to be a hard one to get through for me, but it's really important that we share Kevin's story. This is the podcast called Hockey to Hell and Back. But today, Kevin Kerbison's is Hockey to Hell, and we need to bring him back. This is why I started Puck Support in the first place. I feel very lucky that I've been able to connect with him and even luckier that we have an opportunity to sit down and talk today and figure out a plan. What is the next step to get him back on track? So without further ado, guys, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, my former teammate, 
and my brother, originally from Coquitlam, British Columbia, now living in Kelowna, Kevin Kerbison. Kirby, what's going on, buddy? Just enjoying the Kelowna sunshine. Hey, man. Thanks for doing this. I'm choking back tears here and uh listen i'm just i'm grateful that you're you're here man and we both shouldn't be here but this isn't about me this is this is 100 percent about you and um it's been you know what it's been hard having to you know take it all in talking to you last night and realizing the situation you're in and and knowing all too well what it's like and, and how challenging it is but the fact of the matter is, is you're still here you're still breathing and you still have a chance so thanks for doing this man i know it's not easy no i'm happy to do it you know we talked about it <clears throat> last night and and it's something i've always wanted to be involved in and and uh yeah happy to share my story yeah, well, I mean, it's 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 not going to be easy uh, for for a lot of people to hear, I'm sure. And I know uh, there's people watching and listening that care about you and love you. I'm one of those people. Um, there's people that are watching and listening that you don't even know that love and care about you. And and we'll get to that. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your your journey um, and your love for hockey and and where that all started for you, if you if you don't mind us mind taking us back there just for a couple of minutes, Kev. Sure. Uh... I pretty much loved hockey from day one in this world, man. Uh, I, you know, could skate pretty much before I could walk. Uh, I started playing Rascals uh, at the Burnaby Winter Club when I was like three. Um, and uh, everything in life was just hockey, 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 you know, and, 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 it's all I wanted. It's all I ever wanted to do was be a hockey player. It's the only thing I ever thought about doing. And, and, uh, you know, I loved it and, um, I still miss it. I, I'd love to be back out on the ice someday. I mean, I probably haven't touched uh, a pair of skates in a few years now. So, well, Hey man, listen, as long as you're, you're, you're breathing and, and walking, we can get you back on skates. That can be a goal. I'd love to see that. I'd love to be part of that. Uh, it's, you know, I, I was off skates for eight years and, and just recently, I guess, you know, last year around this time, I put my skates on for the very first time, Kev, I didn't even tell you this. And, uh, you know, I just skated on a lake out here in Ontario and that was, gave me enough inspiration to kind of start this podcast and, and take a chance of trying to get some sort of connection back to the game that that i love too and and i i know you do as well and, and you were a, a really good hockey player and you know you played at the prestigious burnaby winter club which i always hated because we they we could never beat them ever in my life we never ever beat burnaby winter club not once um produced a lot of great players uh, coming out the pipe including matthew barzell uh who's now with the islanders but uh, you know, we connected. I first met you. You were 14 years old. You were the youngest kid uh, in the league uh, coming in. At you know, you were 14 when you played junior B. You were you were late birthday, so at the beginning of the year, you were 14 playing junior B. Um, and I just I remember you were like everyone's little brother, man. Everybody loved you. And uh, what can you what can you tell us about that experience playing junior at, at 14, 15 years old? Um. It was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know, we had a really good group of guys there and, and everyone kind of took me under their wing and especially you and, and uh, you know, played good all and stuff. The, you know, us guys, uh, we were all pretty close and and uh, I, I loved it, you know, but in all reality, it probably was a little bit too soon to, you know, be hanging around 20-year-olds and, and, and getting introduced to drinking and stuff and and uh and rookie parties and all that stuff and i mean we never did anything too crazy but uh still i was just a kid you know like not normal 14 year old stuff uh being introduced to uh, i i you know i can openly say that without question it was 
I'll echo that. We didn't do anything too crazy. Uh, at least it didn't seem too crazy. But reflecting back on it, I mean, it certainly is. It's maybe was normal in the hockey world. But let's be honest, maybe some of the stuff was crazy uh, looking back on it. And I, it's just interesting. I just wanted to touch on that a little bit because you start playing junior hockey when you're 14 years old. I mean, it's it's a big step from going from minor hockey uh, to, to playing with 20 year olds. And I just will reflect quickly because I saw your face light up with a smile when I mentioned the Brody Henderson fight. Do you remember that size of that? It looked like you had a golf ball in your forehead. Literally. Yeah. It looked like they had cut a my hole and put a golf ball in there. And I had a towel that I hung him up in my bedroom. It was covered in blood from like head to toe. I was so proud of from getting beat up by that guy. And I hung it in my room for months. I wouldn't let my parents get rid of it until eventually they threw it out one day when I was at school. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Oh, man. I, I still remember that. And uh, it was funny. I actually, my first off, my dad, my dad says hi. He sends his best to you and um, wishes you all the best. And, and also, I was talking to Scott Henriksen even before we had taught me and you had talked. And, you know, he's wishing you well. There's a bunch of guys that are that are really rooting for you and and they're here for you and they want you to know that and uh you know i i just that was a it was a fun year um and i was really happy that you know i got to meet you that year and uh you know you went off to play in, in the bc hockey league and uh for vernon uh on and off and then powell river and uh tell us a little bit about you know your transition out outside of hockey when you're done playing hockey um what did life start to look like for you well the transition out of hockey was kind of sooner than I had liked, but uh, I ended up having sports hernia surgery when I was 18 and pretty much missed the whole entire year. And after that, I kind of just, you know, mental health and stuff got the best of me. I became really depressed and, and uh, just felt like I had missed on being a normal kid and, and that hockey was kind of, you know, beyond me at that point. And, and so I just started to get mixed up in the wrong crowd. You know, I was just about 19. I started partying and going out and stuff. And, uh, and yeah, it just kind of went downhill from there and in not in a major way, but you know, there's always a beginning and a really good friend of mine died uh, in a boating accident when I was 20 years old, uh, who I had met in Vernon. Uh, um, and that was really hard. Uh, we were really close. And after that, I started drinking lots and and using drugs and and. Uh, yeah, it just. It's one of those things, man, and uh, you know it, it's it's interesting. You bring up the sports hernia, uh, and you know certainly at at 18 years old, when you're trying to that's sort of your your prime years to try to get a scholarship and and different things. And uh, I, I don't, I, I mean it full well. Like you were you were right there, definitely good enough to 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 head in that direction without question. And it's it's one of these things where you know I have a lot of. I live not so much anymore, Kev, but, you know, for a long time, it was like, oh, I, I screwed my hockey career up. I'm not playing hockey. And it kept me ill for a very long time uh, until, you know, <laughs> a year ago. And I still, you know, some days struggle with the what ifs and, and everything else. But what I've learned is that I, I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. And I know that sitting there right now, it, it may not seem like it. And these past years may not seem like it. Uh, but you're currently – tell us a little bit about your current situation and, and what life's been like for you in the last little while, if you don't mind. Um, well, yeah, I'm currently in Kelowna. Uh, I've been here for about four years, uh, just under. Uh, I came here uh, because I got divorced. Um, I was down on the coast before, and I just – kind of wanted to get away from everything and and have a break and um started working and stuff and but things just tend to follow you when you're down and out you know the divorce was hard on me and i beat myself up about it a lot and 
and I was depressed all the time and and so you know you you drink and and you surround yourself with the wrong groups of people and and people are using around you and stuff and you don't want to deal with your emotions so you find ways to cope you know and not the right thing to do but at the time you don't really care you know because you're depressed and you're not happy with your life and anything you know, better or you know anything to feel better and uh you know i can attest to that as well and and i appreciate you sharing that with us and and you know i i mentioned in the intro um that you're currently living in a shelter and, and you're in active addiction and you're very open about it kevin i listen man i i appreciate the fact that you're willing to talk because i've talked to a lot you know this is close to my 100th podcast in the last year that i've done never mind the ones i've been on and i've talked to a lot of hockey players that have gone through addiction um at different times in their life and they're now through it we've talked a lot about uh, those we've lost um through suicide and overdose but i haven't talked to anybody um that's currently you know living in addiction at least to my knowledge certainly not in your position and i know it's not easy um so i i want to let you know that i i appreciate your strength and bravery and I, I think it speaks volumes about you know uh your i mean your character because i i believe that you want to get better uh because uh, you're such you're such a capable young man and everybody that i've talked to over the past couple of days and i already knew all these things but everybody that i've talked to is always telling me you know how generous and kind you are and you know that's what i've been telling people too when i talk to them and i and i know it full well and it just it breaks my heart to see you sitting uh where you are right now but i you know i'm here for you and there's a lot of people watching and there's a lot of comments coming in um and i think i'm just going to get to a couple of them first before we um move on um Lucas Hicks, a friend of mine, saying, sending love to you, man. Um, Dean Smeal, you know, Stan Smeal, Canuck, his brother's watching. He says, let's do this, buddy. Uh, my buddy, Kevin, or David Carlson, says, Kevin, um, another friend of mine's face, says, reach out, Kirby. Brady wants to help. Michelle says, hello, Kevin. Lucas says, you are not alone, Kevin. We are all here for you. Sending love to you, too. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of stories or comments coming in. Shan D. Burness says, thank you for sharing your story. Linda Hangen, Mike Hangen's mom, says, Kev, sending you my best wishes. I hope you can get the help and guidance you need from Tom. That's Tom Hangen, who you know from Burnley Winter Club. Hello to the Hangens. Um, thank you. Darren Burrow says, we love you, Kevin. If I can do it, you definitely can do it. Um, and I know there's a lot of other people watching too, and we'll get to the, some more comments later. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that there's people watching and out there that are, are here supporting you and, and walking with you in this journey. And uh, before we move forward a little bit, uh, what's the current situation with, with where you're at and, and what is it that you're hoping that comes from this podcast, Kev? I just hope that, um, you know, people understand that uh, I don't know I think there's just a really bad stigma around mental health and addiction and 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 that I people are making strides to to try and understand more what it's like and, and what we go through but but you know I don't think they take enough time to listen and and they still judge a lot uh, and think that you know we chose to to do this to ourselves or you know that we just gave up and threw our lives away and I mean I don't want to be in this position at all you know like I hate my life you know but I don't hate my life in the way that I want to end it I, I hate my life and I want to change it I want to do something about it you know I and uh, you know I'm lucky that I have you know, support, you know, you and, and my family and stuff that people that are willing to back me. And, and I know that, you know, it's going to start with me and I'm the one that's going to have to work the hardest, but, but, uh, I do believe that it is possible, you know, and I've come a long way from where I was at a couple years ago, man. Like 
a couple of years ago, I would have told you a lot of different things. Like all I tried to do was kill myself every day, you know, and I, I was the biggest piece of shit there was, man. I, I've got 20 charges. I've got 10 convictions. I've been on probation for the last how many years I've been in jail. I've, you know, I've overdosed. I've committed suicide. I was stabbed, like you said, in a pretty bad incident where I almost died. And, and, uh, you know, that was all just because I I didn't care about my life. I didn't care about myself. I, I didn't feel like I was worthy of living and, and, uh, yeah, but, you know, I don't feel that way anymore, you know, thanks to the support of people and, and showing me that, you know, there is more to life and, and that there is opportunities. And, you know, if I go back to the grind and, and am willing to do the work, then things can change and I'm excited for that. So, okay, well, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, Listen, man, I've uh, been working the behind the scenes a little bit, and I don't mean to just throw shit on, excuse my language, I'm really trying not to swear, um, throw crap on you, especially because about I'm going to bring somebody into this conversation that really wants to help you. And, um, you know, just listen open and, and just be open to it and just know that I absolutely love you 100%, and you can... Uh, you can do this, man, and, and I'll walk with you as, as every step of the way as much as I can. So I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine, former NHLer, played with Wayne Gretzky. Um, he can tell you a little bit more about himself. His name is Jim Thompson. I'm going to bring Jim Thompson into the conversation, Kev. Jim. How you doing, guys? Doing well. How are you doing? Good, Let's, good. Let's bring... Nice to meet you, Kevin. Hey, how are you? I'm really well. I'm, I'm just... Uh... So happy I can be here with you and Brady. And before, you know, we talk about Kevin Brady, you know, I just got to tell you what you're doing. Um, I watch you every day. I'm watching how you're changing people's lives. I'm watching how you changed your life. And it started with you. And you're inspiring so many people you have no idea. And I just want to say, Brady, what you're doing for Kevin tonight. And, you know, Kevin, when Brady said, would you come on and help my friend? I said, let's, let's get this going. And I just, Brady, I'm really, really uh, happy that we met and keep doing what you're doing. I just love it. It's just so, so powerful. So, Thanks. Kevin, a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in uh, a trailer park outside Edmonton called Westview Village. I started drinking and doing drugs at 12 years old. If uh, you, know, you watch the trailer park, boys, that's kind of the lifestyle it is. Stopped when I was 14. Took hockey serious, obviously. Had a you know a journey of ten years of pro hockey, six NHL teams, and then similar to you and Brady, uh, got into heavy drugs and ruined my life. And I was suicidal, similar to both of you guys. I went through some dark, dark times. I'm 13 years sober. I'm in my 13th year of sobriety. And my NHL now, me scoring a goal, is to talk to you tonight on behalf of our friend Brady and try to help you get back into the real world like Brady and I. Brady and I were sitting where you were. You know, I went bankrupt. I lost everything. I lost my family. I, I destroyed who Jim Thompson was. And I went to rehab. And I'm going to tell you a little story. And my counselor. His name was Brian. He said, you know, Jim, he said, all you got to do is stay sober. And if you stay sober, little gifts will fall from the sky. And a gift fell from the sky tonight when Brady said, Jim, can you come and meet my friend Kevin? This is a gift for me. This is a gift for me to be talking to you right now. And, you know, I uh, want you to know that I sat where you sit and I'm here to help you if you want help. Um, I think you've already answered the question. Kevin, you want to get sober? Absolutely. Okay. Then I'm here for you. Um, and, you know, what I would like to see, uh, Brady, can I kind of tell him what you and I talked about? 100%. So what we'd like to see is this. You know, there's a saying we walk, you know, for myself, I walked into the 
forest for 20 years. I got to walk out for 20 years. I'm still walking out of the forest, Kevin. And every day, all I have to do is stay sober. And every day I walk out of that forest, it's a beautiful day. And what I would like to propose to you is we will get you out to Ontario. Brady and I will get you to rehab a place that works real well um, that I know will help you. If you're ready to get sober, it will help you. It saved my life. Um, and we, we take it from there. And one of the things I heard out of this whole thing, when, when that all takes place and we get through all that, you're going to, I own a junior A team out here that you and I get you back on the ice just to have some fun. Something to look forward to, as you said, you want to get your skates back on. So, you know, I'm, I'm here to tell you that I care. I don't know you, but I know you because you know how I know you, as you said it. You know, we all suffer from a little bit of mental health. We all suffer, and I say this from ADHD, all these different things. We all have a little bit going on in everyone uh, that's breathing today. And it's not your fault, Kevin. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't Brady's fault. And we do need to hold each other up and go through the process. And Brady and I are here to do that with you. So, again, ask me questions. Um, you know, I want to hear your thoughts on this whole program and what, what you're thinking. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, I think it's really amazing that, you know, you want to go out of your way to, to help me and give me an opportunity to help myself. Um, and absolutely. I mean, I, I would love nothing more than to, to get out of this situation and to come out and better my life and get clean and sober and, uh, and then get back on the ice and, and have some fun. That, sounds uh pretty amazing so um, kev kev let me do this quick because this is what i do <laughs> i'm in tears here man listen i'm uh we're gonna listen if you're willing man i'm me and you are gonna talk and i know there's some some issues that we need to take care of uh beforehand and i want to make sure that you know you're you're comfortable we're gonna i'm gonna i'm you know through puck support we're gonna pay your way to get you out here um we're going to figure out the uh, talk to some people uh, already um, that are willing to to help uh, with the treatment process and the costs and, and all of that. So your job, Kevin, is to just follow directions, I guess, and hopefully, uh, you know, probably have to take a bus. Um, and I'll make sure, Kev, I know how scary that sounds with your situation of being sick and everything else. We'll make sure that you're in a good mindset, you're not uncomfortable on the bus or whatever that looks like, because I know that would be my first thought if I was in your position um, is, is that. And so I, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but we're going to go to work on that right away. Um, because the way I see it is this, and I'll be honest, Kev, since we talked uh, just a couple days ago, I've literally been wondering if this was ever going to happen because the reality of your life is this, like every time you pick up and use, there's a chance that you're going to die. And I wanted to be able to to talk to you and, and I'm so grateful, Jim. Thank you, man. You're, you've become such a great friend. And, and Kev, let me tell you that Jim Thompson is, is just an unbelievable man. Uh, this is what he does outside of hockey is he, he does interventions and, and different things. And Jim has been, is willing to, to pick you up and drive you to the treatment center, which is in Ottawa, I believe. And he's even offered to pick me up on the way by so that I can be with you and get you to rehab and settle you in uh, and be there for you. And I know Kev, I know your concerns are, are, you know, what are we going to do after? What are we going to do after treatment? What's the meaning and purpose going to be? Again, I don't have all those answers, but I'm here to tell you that, you know, what I'm doing here with puck support and everything else, um, we will be able to find you some way, somehow. You stay on the straight and narrow, and we'll find you some way to be connected with what we're doing um, and give you give you that meaning and purpose. So, man, I'm, I'm so grateful that Jim agreed to do this, and, and it was kind of a, a last-minute thing, obviously, and he, this was all him, so... Like, thank you, Jim. Um, 
if anyone else wants to hop in, I mean, I, I, I'm just bl well, flat, I'm blown away. I, I will say this, and, and I'll go back to that statement of the little gifts falling from the sky. Brady will tell you in his sobriety how many gifts are falling into his, his life. And there's a gift every day, Kevin. And all I'm going to say this again. I drive by places I used to use till this day. I got this bracelet on here. I snap it to say, don't even go there. Don't think it. It's, it's you know, I, I've been living this life of I can't go back to it. And all you have to do is stay sober. And we will help you. We will support you. So back to Brady's comment about what's after it. I don't even worry about that because – if we get you here and we get you up to Ottawa and you go through the process, everything will unfold right in front of you. It'll unfold and there, there'll be something there. Believe me, there'll be something there. That's the least of your worries. Yeah. And, and, and I say this respectfully, I, I think a really cool trip. I kind of wish I was on the bus with you driving across Canada on a bus is a, is a brilliant you know, the scenery, the thought process you're going to be thinking about coming here and seeing Brady and I, to me, this is, this is uh, like, this is back to a road trip, gentlemen, when we went on the bus to a hockey game, that was one of my favorite times, right? So that's the way, you know, listening to you guys earlier, comparing it to sports, that's the way uh, I'd be looking at it, Kev, don't worry about anything. You know, this is, this is a, a blessing today that Brady and has, has done all this for you. And I'm just like, again, this was a gift for me. I'm sitting in my office and go, Brady, thank you for the gift. This is a real tremendous night for me to even be looking at you and talking to you. I do understand, if I'm correct, you have a young daughter. Kevin? Is he frozen? He might be. Well, we lost him for a minute. Hopefully he comes back in. He does. He does have a young daughter. Um, is he back? Hold on. Let me remove him and bring him back in. Maybe that'll help. We lost him, but... Uh, Hopefully he comes back, but yes, he does. He does have a young daughter. Um, he's frozen. Uh, maybe his phone died, uh, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, Jim, thanks, man. He does. He has a young daughter named Eliana, who's five years old, um, and uh, he gets. Uh, he loves her, man. He he wants to get her back in in his life, and it's my understanding um, from hearing. I asked him if his if I asked him if his parents still talk to her, and uh, he's he, he told me that they're in contact with his daughter. And so, um, you know, unfortunately, Jim, I I haven't spoken to my kids, Brooklyn and Brody, in five years, and I'm I'm over a year off all the stuff, and it's just one of these things that I, I it's one of these things that I continue to work towards. But I know that if I stay in my addiction. Well, guess what? That it's never going to happen. And so I explained to him the other night, Jim, that I was like, and hopefully he comes back on and, and maybe and maybe his phone died, unfortunately, with his current situation. I mean, these are the things that happen. And I'm just grateful that we got to the got to that part and he's willing and it's unbelievable. But I, I said to him, I said, Kev, you know, you, you have to understand that, you know, all these things that you want to happen, they're not going to happen overnight. And And I know that I was I was just that guy. I was like, I want it. If I want something, I want it now. And so that's why my addiction was so powerful, I think, because I wanted to feel better. Okay, well, I'm not willing to go through the work or the process. I'm going to use because that's going to make me feel better now for right now, but it's only going to make things a hundred times worse. And so, uh, you know, I, I really, his because he froze, I'm fairly certain that his phone died or he lost connection and uh, hopefully he can come back but yeah he does he does have a young daughter jim okay so you know this brady uh your champ tonight uh this is a really really i'm gonna repeat myself it's a beautiful thing that you've done for your friend and you know you you will talk to uh kevin behind the scenes 100 we'll, percent. We'll, we'll talk to his family one step at a time and we'll have this this you know i'll call him a young man who's got a life to live, uh, get his daughter back into his life. And he's going to be, you know, the, as you and I both know this, he's just going to push it forward. Yeah. Because when he goes through his sobriety and he gets on to his new journey, he's going to be doing what you do. He's going to yeah. be doing yeah. what I do. And as you know, it's one life at a time. Yeah. And that's what I said to you about Kevin. It's one life at a time. And there's a lot of bad things going on out there, Brady, as you know, and I'm going to tell you, it's what you're doing. and 
you know, the, the support system you got with the names you're mentioning. It's just, what else have we got to do here? Kids are suffering. Parents are suffering. People are suffering from mental health and, and addiction and all these things. And we, we need to work together. So, well, Jim, man, honestly, I'm I'm so grateful for for your friendship, and and this was you know this was your idea, you know. I I just asked if you would come on and talk to him, so you know I, I wasn't expecting because uh, I I didn't you know be honest I I was hoping that I would have somewhere for him to go, and and it just goes back. I pray a lot, and you're an angel, man. It's like God answered my prayers, and and Kevin is willing to go and it's just, it's such a beautiful thing, but seriously, Jim, thank you. Uh, we're going to make it happen. And there's a lot of great comments coming in that I'll, I'll get to. Um, uh, but it's, you know, I just reached out to Kevin cause he is my friend, but you're really the, the, the man behind the scenes that came to me, um, through the conversation, not even too long ago and saying, Hey, if we can get him to Ontario, if we can get him to treatment, I got a place for him to go. And you have no idea, um, how, how much that, just filled my heart to know that he had somewhere something to look forward to instead of just having this conversation and me not having a place to to have an idea or a plan for him because I know how dangerous that can be um and I just I'm so grateful for you Jim man thank you so much Brady my my you know what teamwork makes the dream work and we're all in this together and and you're welcome but you don't have to thank me because, like I said, this is a blessing for Kevin and his daughter. And uh, your hard work, looking, going, looking for him, is is why we are here tonight. So, just uh, you know, keep me up to date. If you need anything, obviously, uh, get a hold of me. And there he is. Is he back? He's back. Let's see. He's gonna, oh, he's back, kind of, but he's frozen still. There there he is. He's back, Kev. He got cold. Did you get cold? <laughs> yeah, the uh, luxuries of being homeless. Uh, my phone died, and uh, I lost you guys there for a minute. So that's no problem, man. We kept the conversation going. But Jim, I know you were going to go, but you were you had a question for him, and we kind of touched on it. But you can ask him again if you want. I well, before you got cut off there, Kev. Uh, I understand you have a daughter. That is true. Yep. Yeah. And how old, is she, how old is she? She's uh, five and a half years old. Um, her name is Eliana. Okay. And uh, I miss her and haven't seen her in a few years, but I think about her every day. And sure you do. I just uh, hope I get to get back and be a part of her life soon. Well, I'm going to say this before I go. Um, you stay sober. You take our gift. Get felt from the sky for you today, Kevin. And Brady and I will take care of you. We'll get you out here and we'll go on a little journey, the three of us, and let everything fall into place. And I can promise you one thing your beautiful daughter will come back into your life. I can promise you that. All you have to do is stay sober. Gentlemen, Kevin, I look so forward to giving you a hug and meeting you. And Brady, I can't thank you enough. I'm buzzing, man. This is this is unbelievable. And just thank you. Thank you. And uh, Kevin, be safe. Be safe until we get you on that bus, please. And I'll say this because I have to say it. Try not to use. Start, the detox, I know it. Detox is a, is a monster. You know, coming down and coming off. and But you got to do it sometimes. So the, as soon as you start, you know, it's walking out of that forest, buddy. And that's going to be, you know, the, a tough part of it. But you got to start sometime. And if you can try to get that going now, um, please do. I know it's a bear, but try, you know, think of your daughter. Think of what's going on here, the gift that's fallen into your lap. And I know that's a tough one. So, Brady, thank you. Kevin, thank you. I'll look forward to our uh, the three of us doing uh, our journey to Ottawa. And uh, I'll, Brady, you, co you contact me and we'll start the process. Wow. Kevin, to your family, to your family and friends. Okay, Kevin is going to get better. We're going to get him better. And don't give up on him. We don't give up on anybody, Kevin. We don't give up on anybody, nobody. And your family and friends, if they're listening, do not give up on this man. You guys have a wonderful night. Thanks, Jim. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jim. And I look forward to seeing you as well. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity. And uh, I'll see you soon.
you will. And I know you're grateful. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Bye, Brady. Wow. Isn't that awesome, Kev? That's wicked, man. He's a great guy. Listen, I, I know it's uh I know it can sound scary and uh you know what? I'll tell you what, the your the life that you're living right now every single day is a lot more scary um than getting clean. And I can say that because I've done it. I've done it and I'm also here to say life isn't easy, but anything that is good and, and worth it, it, it takes work. And man, uh, you heard it from Jim. He's not going to give up on you. I'm not going to give up on you. And there's so many others that, you know, are here for you, man. Like, and that, that starts now that's, that's forever. And the, the amount of comments are coming in and there's, there's more people watching tonight than I've ever had watch a live show too. So, and every single person uh is is here for you man and they want to they want to see you do well um i'm going to just get into a few comments uh to people that were chiming in for the last 10 minutes there's so many i don't know if i can get to all of them uh, uh let's see adam runnings has never give up hope uh brian white a new friend of mine here in muskoka says sending love from muskoka thank you for sharing your story um Mar martech 360 that's blair and Ange. hey kev angie and i are here for you buddy we love you cousin thinking about you that's pretty awesome hello to blair and, and Ange martin uh, out there in bc they're they're old friends of mine too and uh you know i spoke to them and you know they want to see you get better and and to be honest with you you know if you really want to get technical uh you know i I owe Blair some money from a long time ago, and I brought that up to him today, and he echoed the same thing. He's just happy to see that I'm doing better, and and he really just want they want their cousin back. They want their cousin back. That's your you know that's your family, and so that's awesome that they're there. Hello, guys. Stuart Smith, firefighter out in Abbotsford, friend of my dad's, new friend of mine. Props to both of you for being so open and honest with your struggles. Sharing your stories will help yourself and so many others. And so Stuart messaged me earlier today and and asked how he could help you and. And, uh, you know, he, he said if you needed anything, clothes or whatever. Um, but I'm telling you what, what I'm going to have for you when you get here is I'm going to have you decked head to toe in puck support swag. Whatever the hell you want, it's yours. And uh, we're going to be, yeah, man, things are going to be so awesome. Uh, Lucas Hicks again says, Kevin, you are loved and we are here for you. Faye Bocek says you are worthy. Krista Gutsis, formerly Chris, Krista Sisson. You remember her? Yeah. Thinking about you, Kevin, you can get through this. Don't give up on yourself. Hello to Shane Gutsis and, and Krista Gutsis. It's crazy. I still picture her running around the Poco rink as a, as a young girl. Um, hello to you guys. Jason Porter, fake it till you make it. Send in love and prayers. If anyone can help, it's Brady. He's helped more than a few. Keep your chin up. There's always better days ahead. Uh, GM Anderson, Jim Thompson's GM of his junior hockey team and support everything he is about. That led me to Brady and many others that are doing great things for people that need help. So, yeah, Jim, it kind of may, may have cut out, but Jim owns a, a junior A team out here in Ontario, the Aurora Tigers. So very cool. He wants to help get you back on the ice, and I'm looking forward to, to doing that as well. Awesome words of encouragement. Uh, I got to skip ahead a few so we can get to them all. Uh, thank you, Jim Thompson, Jim Thompson with hearts, um, Sandra Murray, the executive director of mental health and addiction for puck sport. Hello, Sandra valuing the sanctity of human life is the first step. Kevin, you're already there. Thank you for your transparency with your struggles. I'm confident that the tests you're experiencing will later be a testimony of triumph to inspire others. And that's what Jim was saying when your phone died is that, you know, you're, you're going to have the ca the capacity and the experience to do just what I'm doing now. And we'll be able to do this together to help other people, man. There's no doubt about it. You have that. You are that. You're just like me, man. You're, you're that kind, generous, compassionate guy. We just need to get you on the straight and narrow. And Kevin, you have no idea how much I, I love you, man, and how happy I was to hear that you accepted that. Going there, it's, it's unbelievable. Brian White, yes, way to go, Kevin. Let's go. Yes, buddy. Jim is a hero. Good decision from Krista Gutsis. I agree. Cody Shepard says, you got this, Kevin. David Carlson, yes, Kevin. I've always, uh, Jim, uh, GM Anderson, I've always said to Jim, the respect I have for him is because he is here with us and I can't describe it. There are so many who have lost the battle and Jim is helping save lives. Just priceless. And I'll echo those words. 
Bob Babcock says, Jim and Brady, awesome. God bless you both for helping this young man. Uh, an angel about Jim Thompson. That's right. Uh, Brady, you have a huge heart. I don't know about that. I just feel like I'm doing what's right. Um, Pretty awesome, buddy. Yeah, well, there's so many here. You're gonna have to go. You're gonna have to go through all of these if you want to read them all, because it'll take us four more hours to go through all the comments. I'm not kidding. Uh, Ashley Henry gives you a heart. Godsend. Boom. I could just keep clicking these all the way down, Kev. Um, it's uh, there's and they're still coming in. They're still coming in. It's gonna take us all night. Graham Bonner, who I called earlier this morning says, well done, believe my brother, you are worth it. So Graham is a former first, uh, was he, I can't remember, I think a third round pick to the Montreal Canadiens. He's older, played in the Sioux. He had 66 goals one year in the Sioux. He's been on my podcast. Jim was also on my podcast as well. So um, I can hear someone's phone going off in the background. My brother from another mother in there is his phone's ringing, but that's all good. Um, yeah, so Graham is also uh, in the addictions field. He's uh, struggled, Kev, with a lot of the same things that that we've talked about tonight, yourself and myself and Jim. Um, another, He led the OHL in, in goals one year, and it's just unbelievable. Uh, he's supporting you. He's an addictions counselor. I called him and, and spoke to him this morning and, and asked you know some advice uh, about how I should handle uh, this conversation and everything. So Graham, Bones, Bonner, Bones. I, I call him Graham now because Bones is his hockey name and he's no longer Bones, the hockey player. He's, he's Graham. So Graham, thank you um, for the conversation we had earlier today. Um, and Brent Sopel also sends his best to you, Kev. We were going to call you earlier and maybe we'll do that tomorrow. But my friend Brent Sopel, uh, he's there for you as well. And I know Darren McCarty is there for you. Everybody, man, we're all, we're all here for you, whatever you need, man. And I'm just so... So grateful that we were able to to connect, and I'm I, I'm feeling really good. I, I was a, honestly, Kev, I was a little worried whether you're going to say yes or not. How are you feeling about it all right now? I feel good, man. Honestly, like uh, we talked about this a little bit before, where you know uh, when you're out here on the street, it's um, it's hard to to know how to take that first step. You know, you, you want things to change. You want it to get better. You want to fight for your life and fight for something, but you don't really know how or, or where to start or, or, or what to do. You know, it's not that easy to just walk away and, and, and go to rehab and do this. It, it, it's a process. And, and without having people to fucking support you and guide you, it, uh, it, it's tough. It's overwhelming. So, like I said, I, I'm I'm so thankful for this, and and uh, you know, I love you. You're my brother. I trust you, and I believe you want nothing but the best for me as well. And and I do want to be sitting there with you doing this and helping other people and 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 giving back. So, the I first step, you. the first step, Kev, is is taking care of yourself, and I know that's hard because you're like me, and it's hard to think about ourselves sometimes, and we just because we feel better when we're doing stuff for others. But you know, just worry about yourself right now, and there's there's no doubt in my mind that we're gonna you're gonna be a big part of what we're doing. We'll we'll change the world, man. We will help people. You know, uh, Jim and myself and you and Bones uh, together. Uh, you know, we we have the power to to really do great things, and like you know, like Jim said. You just got to get sober um, and and we're going to help you do that. And I believe you're going to help yourself do that. And I just want to get to one more comment coming from Dean Smeal. This is Stan Smeal's brother. I mean, the senior advisor for the Canucks, this is his brother, says, Kev, man, if you need anything just to talk, even that I'm a totally strange or even that I'm totally strange to you. But, buddy, we have two things in common, addiction and hockey. I can pass my contact along to Brady to share. I am here for you, bud. So that's pretty cool, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, you're you're awesome, man. So, listen, Kev, uh, we'll wrap this up, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call you uh, as soon as you know I'm done. I got to do a little outro, uh, but we're gonna make a plan, um, and, and we're gonna stick to this plan. And me and you will go through the finer details uh, with Jim and and everything else, and we'll make sure that it that it all works for you. And and but at the end of the day, Kev. You have nothing holding you back in Kelowna. There's nothing making you stay in Kelowna. You have every single reason to just come now as soon as you can. And I'll be there to greet you. I'll, I'll go with you to treatment. I will go with you 
to treatment and drop you off and I'll even come up there and visit you whenever you can have visitors or I don't know what's going on with COVID, but you can call me every night. You can call me days if you have phone privilege, whatever that looks like, man, I'm here for you 100% of the way. And my dad, last comment, my dad says, great job, Brady, which is crazy because my dad never tells me great job, not at least for the last 10 years. So dad, that's pretty cool. I'm almost crying reading that. Thank you, Jim. Can't wait to see you on the other side. So my dad's looking forward to it as well. And like everybody, everybody believes in you, Kev. Um, this is my dad says this is what puck support was started for. And you're damn right. It is, man. We're going to, you know, this is amazing. I, I feel amazing about this for you, not for me, not for puck support. Because when I listen, Kev, when I had to see you last night, living in a shelter and where, where I've been, I've been homeless. I've been in a shelter. I've had all the same things happen. Uh, man, I get it. I, I completely 100 percent understand um and it's it was hard for me to see you in that position and so i just i want you to we're gonna go over the finer details of it and i just want you to just take a chance here man take a chance you're worth it i mean buddy like i said uh yeah it is scary and and uh you know i'm not sure how it's gonna go but i, I know i'm gonna try that's for sure because if i don't try I'm probably not going to be here very much longer, you know, and uh, I don't want to do that to anybody. I don't uh, want to leave life uh, on this note, and uh, I still got a lot of time to spend with my daughter and my family and, and make things right, so I'm looking forward to it, man, and, and like I said, I'm so grateful and and thankful that you got in touch with me and reached out to me and, and that you guys are willing to go to bat and help me the way that you are. And I love you. And, I love uh, you, man. And just, I'm going to put a picture up, man, right now. And like, this is, these are all the ones we've lost to suicide and overdose. And you can go through that picture uh, or drug related deaths or hard lives. Most of them are, it's pretty much half and half to be honest. And we should both be on there, my friend. We should both be on there. Mitch Fadden's in there. Matthew Lazinski, Derek Bugard. Uh, a couple new ones need to go on there, unfortunately. Rippin, yeah, Terry Chafford. And let me tell you something. I was trying to find you on social media, which was impossible. And finally yesterday, I tried, because I or the day before, because you, I thought you lost your phone. So I was trying to figure out a way to contact you before I called the shelter. And so I was like, maybe he's got Twitter randomly. And so I searched your Twitter and I meant to bring this picture up, but I'm going to do it now before I let you before I let you go. I'm going to show you. I don't even know if you know what your your last tweet was. Do you know? No. Let me show you. I'm going to. I'm going to show you what your last tweet was. Tell me if you can read that. Forever in our hearts. Hashtag number 37. That's about Rick Rippin. Yeah. 2011-08-16. That's your last tweet. So when I saw that last night, I was like, wow, you know what? And so, Kev, you got a, you got a chance here, man. And I'm, I'm just, I'm really looking forward. I echo Jim. I want to give you a big hug. Just don't squish me with that. Those big biceps of yours, man. You're, you thick. <laughs> you're, so, you're, you're so just like when you're 14, you look like you were doing steroids. Oh, Christ. I was just a little chubby kid back then. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. Okay, Kev, listen, man. I'm going to let you go, but I'm not going to let you go because I'm going to be calling you here in a few minutes. So make sure you pick up your phone. I know it's uh, tough, but listen, I'm, I got you 100%. I wish I could come out there and pick pick your ass up right now. But you gotta, you're going to have to do the, the jaunt here, not by yourself, but physically by yourself. And like Jim said, man, it's going to give you time to think. Um and reflect and I'm really excited for you man and I'm excited for your daughter I told you last night that I've been clean over a year I haven't talked to my kids and I told you my daughter turns 13 on St. Patrick's Day and she's not five and a half like Eliana you have a chance to get your crap together right now and be there for the best years of her life man it's up to you so I'm, I'm really grateful that we're able to connect and, and thank you for doing this. First off, sharing your story and transparency. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. It's hard to show people our vulnerabilities and things that are going on. But 
let me tell you that this, what we've done tonight, what you've done tonight, it's going to, it's going to save lives, man. Thank you. And, uh, you know, to anybody else out there, you know, it is hard to show your face, uh, when you're at rock bottom and, uh, you know, this is, this is my life, you know, this is where I'm every day, all the time outside, whatever, you know, but, uh, because I was willing to do this is the reason that these guys are helping me. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really, really lucky to have you guys. And thank you for everything. I love you. And uh, I'll see you soon. Hey, buddy. I love you, too. I can't wait to see you in person. I'll call you here shortly. All right, brother. Okay, buddy. Thanks, Curbs. Love you, man. Love you, too. Wow. I don't even know what to say, to be honest. That's the first step. That's the first step for Kevin Kerbison right there. Jim Thompson, thank you, man. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. The first step is done. Now we get Kevin Kerbison to Ontario. We get him to treatment. We get him on the right path. We get him his life back. You know who you are who made the phone call and gave me Kevin's number. Thank you. Thank you. To everybody who supported myself and Puck Support, once again, thank you. And uh, I got one more sponsor to get to before I wrap this up. I honestly, I, I have nothing to say. For once in my life, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm, I'm actually speechless. I hope this is recording because this will be the first and last time that I have nothing to say. Seriously though, Curbs, thank you for being transparent and showing us your vulnerable side. It's not easy, I know firsthand, but we all appreciate it. It's not, uh, it's a terrible life out there and seeing my, my friend, my former teammate, my brother in that situation was extremely difficult. Jim Thompson says, what an amazing man. Are you talking about yourself, Jim? Because that's who I think you are. <sighs> I guess before we go, um, we'll save this for next episode. We'll give away two or three at rolls of Pride Tape on the next episode. I find out tomorrow if Kelly Rudy from Hockey Night in Canada will be joining the show. He's going to let me know tomorrow. Hopefully we can get that done Wednesday, 8 p.m. Wednesday night with Kelly Rudy. If it's not Kelly Rudy, it's going to be my good, good friend, Paul Rosen. Host of The Rosen Report. If you haven't seen Paul Rosen's new show, check it out. The Rosen Report on Facebook brought to you by Paramount Sports Management and Gooch Live. Check it out. Support my friend and fellow puck support warrior Paul Rosen look forward to having him on the show again soon I'm going to leave you with performance wellness here in a minute thank you to James Gardner and Matthew Arnani who were on the podcast a, a little while ago and they put together just an amazing program uh, to just help athletes you know looking for an edge a competitive edge not only physically but more importantly emotionally mentally and uh, it's just an amazing program. So when I leave you with that uh, voiceover of Steve Buckley talking about performance wellness, listen, and if you're a hockey player, if you have uh, kids who are in hockey, this is something I strongly suggest doing. We pay for training. We pay for ice times. This is a this is an investment that you want to make in yourself if you're a hockey player, if you're a hockey parent, because it's not just about hockey. It's about your emotional wellness, intentful movements, but it's 
It's about becoming a good person and just learning about our bodies and, and how it translates into sports. And I'm not doing it just justice. So get in contact with them for more information. I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't believe in them. You guys know me. I don't do things for money. I don't make a cent from this podcast. It actually costs me money to do this. But what is money really? I mean, we all needed to survive. I certainly wish I had more. But it's the little things that keep me going. Being able to spend time with the kids, Beta and Hadley and Lincoln recently was amazing. Um, I pray every night that Brooklyn and Brody will somehow come back into my life when the time is right for them without pressure. Brooklyn's birthday coming up. She's going to be 13 years old. I know a lot has changed. I know a lot has changed since I last saw my kids. They've grown up. And it's my hope that Kevin Kerbison doesn't have to live with that same feeling that I have of missing out on all those wonderful years. So Brooklyn and Brody, if you're listening, if you're watching, I love you. I think about you every single day, just like Kevin thinks about Eliana. And I'm here whenever, if ever, I'm always here. I'm not going anywhere. I know it's been rough. I've made some poor choices, but I'm not doing that anymore today. And the fact of the matter is, is I love you guys so much. I love all my family back home in Port Coquitlam, mom, dad, Auntie Leon Glor, all the cousins. Shout out to Ryan Odamira, my cousin in Japan. Love you cuz his sister, Chrissy Odamira, former Canadian Olympian with the softball team in Las Vegas. Hello to you and everybody. If you want to support me directly, the podcast, because I don't make any money from puck support either. Not yet anyways, but that's all about to change. Dave Hunchak, former Swift Current Bronco assistant coach, head coach of Moose Jaw and the Kalamazoo Blazers. He's gone through his own struggles now on the other side. Him and I had a two-hour conversation today about structuring puck support uh, and what that looks like. Um, and Nathan Weeb, uh, chaplain of the Swift Current Broncos, he's going to be involved heavily, obviously, Sandra. Uh, and we're, we're going to take this to the next level. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. The time is now. And it feels amazing. But if you want to support me directly, which some people like to do, but again, I, it's not about me, but if people always ask me, can I send you money? Can I do this? I don't like to take money. I'd like to give something back in return. So if you want to support me directly, you can do so through Patreon. Patreon.com slash Brady Leavold. There's not much there. I only have like five patrons. There's different tier levels. Building on it. In the last couple of days, I'm starting to add a couple little things, but I'm going to sit down this week and really map it out so that people who want to support me will get something in return. It's a monthly subscription, five, 10. I think there's a 25 and a $50 one, maybe even more. And I'll make sure that, you know, if you want to support me, I'm going to support you because that's what I am. Give you a special promo codes to Puck Support. I'll send you autograph pictures of me and my guests down the, down the line, whatever that looks like. But that's how you can do it. Patreon.com slash Brady Leibold. But more importantly, if you want to support Puck Support, you can do so. PuckSupport.com. You can get any of our swag, including this crew neck Puck Addiction with the Puck Support logo on the back. Many other awesome things. Hats, t-shirts, you name it. Part of the proceeds go to our mental health and addiction fund. Uh, the rest goes to growing puck support. We do have some money in the bank uh, for things like getting Kevin Kerbison to Ontario. And that's because of you guys. Thank you. That's because we auctioned off a book. Thank you to the Probert family. And we had a, and a, a great donation today uh, from a new friend. Uh, I'm not sure if he wants to be named, so I'll leave it now without name. We'll just call him Bob N. Bob, thank you. Uh, we appreciate your kind, kind donation. I know you're going through a hard time of your own. I'm here for you. I've been talking to him on and off the last couple of days. If you're struggling, don't give up on yourself. 
please don't give up on yourself. If you need support, reach out to Sandra, Sandra at pucksupport.com. You can email me, Brady at pucksupport.com. I'm not the professional, but I got life experience and I got a heart. I got a heart. I got ears that will listen. And I try to be available when I can. It's not always easy, but I do get back to everybody uh, in a timely manner. At least I try to. So please just know that you're not alone. Never, ever, ever are you alone. Kevin Kerbison, I love you. Jim Thompson, thank you. Seriously, wow. Wow, thank you. Look forward to Kevin Kerbison getting out to Ontario. Thank you to everybody who watched, listened after the fact, everybody who supported Puck Support, Nick Kiprios, Doug McLean, Unreal Kipper. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Pretty awesome stuff. Once again, thank you to everybody at Global BC, Global Okanagan for doing the story. I'm so grateful. Thank you uh, for sharing not only my story, but more importantly, Puck Support. Those that we've lost, we think of you often. If this is the first time you've ever heard about Puck Support, you see the picture here. There's a couple more that sadly need to go into this picture, but every single piece of our merchandise has an in memory of, before I go, I know I keep saying that. This one has Merrick's Fatos in it. Tonight, my hat, the late Mark Pavlich, rest in peace, Mark. So we remember all those we've lost I personally put all those names in the items. I do it, and every time I do, I see my name going in there, and I'm grateful to be here to be able to do this. But I know there's people out there that are hurting, that are still suffering, and I just want to echo the words, you are never, ever alone. I'm going to leave you with performance, wellness. Please check them out. If you're an athlete of any sport, check them out. I'm serious. You want an edge? You want to get that mental side of your game to tie in with your physical game? Check out James Gardner, Matthew Arnone at Performance Wellness. First Star Therapy. you got to check it out. Remember, be kind, be grateful, and have a great day if you so choose. Pocket to Hell and Back is brought to you by Performance Wellness. The collaboration between First Star Therapy and MindFrame brings a flexible, holistic program to athletes. The goal is to empower and enhance every athlete's well-being on and off the field of play through focus on intentful movement and mindful practices. You can contact them at consult at firststartherapy.com and team at mindframe.info. Plus, you can check them out on the web at firststartherapy.com and follow First Star on Instagram at firststar.therapy and at MindFrame on Twitter plus MindFrame Fit on Instagram.